postman character, so why shouldn't postman Neil? He's a real postman who's become the talk of headcorn by breaking out in print, as Amanda Fisher explains. A keen photographer and amateur historian, Neil Aldridge is happiest when he's out and about headcorn village on his bike. He knows every nook and cranny, all the characters and stories about the village, because his job as postman brings him in direct contact with the past and present of this rural community every day. So when Neil got together with four other local historians last year to look over 6,000 photographs showing the past 150 years of life in Headcorn, a book was born. Neil wrote about the old houses, especially his favourite. Headcorn Manor, just behind the church, is probably my favourite. Because it's a beautiful house and it's got a you know, very rich history to it. Originally it was a, a Wealdon Hall house. It was probably built about 1450 and it had a central hall with a fire and later on the hall was floored over. Um, there's plenty of other houses in Headcorn like that, but none as, as beautiful as that one. It's a really fine example. In 1842, the railway came to Headcorn. It was an important modern innovation, carrying fruit, hops, grain and cattle from the Weald of Kent to the surrounding market towns. And every summer, special trains ferried thousands of Londoners to Headcorn for the hop-picking season. Ancient houses, shops and granaries still jostle for position on the wide high street, though horse-drawn carts and carriages have given way to the thousands of cars which drive through Headcorn en route for Tenston and the Romney Marsh. The Norman Church still stands in its quiet graveyard at the very end of the village street. And the blasted oak tree, symbol of Headcorn, has survived despite last year's hurricane. Well, the oak tree, I mean, we always say it's, it's our oldest resident. Um, I've always been told from a child it was a thousand years old, although nobody really knows. However, we had a, a chap from the Forestry Commission come a few years ago, and he'd been going around comparing other old oaks in England and Wales, and uh, he came to the conclusion that it was about 500 years old, uh, going by other trees which are complete in Sherwood Forest. And what sort of people do you think would buy a book like this? I think a, a pretty wide range of people, I mean those who've always lived in the village and their families have always lived locally and um, those who've moved here the last few years and they commute up to London, they, they like to you know, show their relations and uh, you know, tell them what the village is all about. They've got a very you know, interesting history to it. Good.